And joining me now is somebody who navigates it so well, women's rights attorney Michelle Simpson Teagle. She's also preparing legal action against the law in Texas state court. Michelle, good to see you. I mean, you know, we know that you are preparing to sue in Texas. You already have your own restraining orders in place to allow you as an attorney to be able to do what you're doing and not run afoul of this law. So what case are you now trying to make in court? So, I mean, the first one that we, we were involved in was the, the first temporary restraining orders that were granted in Texas state court on actually August 31st. You know, our team, our goal was to take the teeth out of this law in our home state. Uh, we are a team of Texas women lawyers and we're not afraid of a fight. And we saw this law and we realized that there were federal cases pending and those are certainly important. But as I think Jeffrey just noted really well, there are other issues with this law from a civil procedural perspective and also under the Texas Constitution. And so we wanted to make sure that we started and were proactive in trying to protect women in our home state. You know, on that procedural issue, one of the things that people have not been talking about, Michelle, we talked about the potential Uber driver, right, the front desk receptionist, anyone who may have aided and abetted. But one of the things that I think is so shocking about this law and this end run around the judicial process is that conceivably, even you as an attorney trying to advocate against the law, trying to bring this, this case to a court of law, you had to get your own injunctions that you wouldn't be personally sued now that this law is in place. And I understand that's, that's only temporary as well. Are you worried, and the group you're with, that you all are now targets as well, legally speaking? It's certainly something that we were preparing for and I was ready to take on. You know, I represent women all over the country in civil sexual assault and abuse cases. And I often have to have really tough conversations with women about what to do after they're raped. And sadly, pregnancy is one of those issues that we have to discuss. And under this new law, that discussion and that advice could be considered in that catch-all of aiding and abetting because rape and sexual assault is not an exception in this new Texas ban on abortion. You know, every time I hear that and think about that, I hope that really resonates with people. What was not included, what it means, who could be a possible aider and better. And, I, and one of the things I have a question about is, I mean, how is this law not contradicting HIPAA and privacy laws? How is this not running afoul, the idea of even trying to prove this case? They've got this website for these tips and this sort of hotline to say that somebody is involved in this, but how does it not contradict HIPAA? I, th I think that it goes against fundamental principles between a doctor and a patient and arguably would violate that. But I think even bigger than that, it violates the United States and Texas constitutions. Mm -hmm. The American Medical Association and the Texas Medical Association have all come out and said, this law is a problem. Supreme Court, why didn't you act? And that's a really disappointing thing that I think is coming from not just doctors and lawyers, but a lot of professions and helpers who want to aid women, social workers, donors, organizations that provide any aid to women in this space are potentially liable under this law. Michelle, thank you. And by the way, a lot of things could now be on the chopping block under this particular precedent that's now been set. So it, everything seems to be fair game under this. Thank you for your time. Thank you.